All right, I'm going to show you that John chapter 14, verse 9 to 11, totally destroys the polytheistic Roman Catholic Trinity. I'm going to read it for you. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet that... Sorry, I'm not good at reading on a computer. And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. How sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Huh, interesting. So if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Um, how does that work for the polytheistic Catholic Trinity? That there are three separate persons, they're all God, but then only one God, you know. It's ridiculous. And how do I know that? It's because I used to be a Trinitarian myself. I used to say that, yeah, God is three, there are three persons all claiming to be God. They're all God, but they're just one God, you know. It's ridiculous. But here, Jesus said, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. So, you've seen Jesus Christ, the Son of God, while he's on earth. You've seen God the Father. But look at this, because Jesus explains how this is so. Verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Hmm. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not on myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So the Father is in Jesus? Uh, yeah, that's how if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. The Father is in Jesus Christ. You know, for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now some could interpret that verse to say that, you know, um, the reason why I don't like using Colossians 2 9 that much in terms of the Godhead is because personally I believe that Colossians 2 9 could be used to say that, you know, in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. But what I believe that's saying is that it's saying that Jesus Christ is fully God within himself. But I digress. But it says right here that believe us not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The Father is in Jesus Christ. Verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the for the, for the the very work's sake. Uh, I'll keep reading. I'll be on verse 11. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I, should, that I do, shall he do the greater works than these things shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And verse 13, And whosoever shall ask me in my name, that will I do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. So the Father is glorified in the Son. Huh. Interesting. And then, you know, verse 20. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Huh. So Jesus is in the Father? Wow. Totally destroys this polytheistic Roman Catholic Trinity that Jesus, the Son of God, which he is. I'm not denying that Jesus is the Son of God. Absolutely, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm not denying that. But what they teach is that the Son of God and the God the Father are two different, separate God, you know, persons. And, that, and how I know that is because, again, I used to be a Trinitarian myself. You know, I used to believe that, that Jesus Christ was a separate person claiming to be God, and God the Father was a separate person claiming to be God. And they're all, they're all God, but they're one God. You know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, it, it's ridiculous. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not denying that. He's absolutely the Son of God. But the Father is in him. He is fully God, just as God the Father. Okay? So, just wanted to show you that. How Romans uh, 14, verses 9 to 20, just destroys this polytheistic Roman Catholic trinity of one God, but there are only three, God, or three gods, but they're one God, but then there are three persons. And it, it's just, it's ridiculous. God is not the author of confusion. So, anyway. And, and one last point I want to add is that Romans 14 also destroys modalism. Because, again, you have this false dichotomy. Either you're Trinity or you're modalist. Uh, neither one of them is right. I'm going to show you that. Uh, John 14, 28. This shows, this, this uh, verse refutes modalism. So it's kind of funny. Jesus actually refutes the Trinity and refutes modalism in the same passage. Uh, verse 28. You have heard now that I say unto you, I go away and come unto, or come again unto you. If you love me, you will, you will rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So there's obviously a hierarchy in the Godhead. You know, in the book of Corinthians, I'll actually I'll show you that verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27, 28. There is a hierarchy. Jesus Christ does submit to God the Father. There is a hierarchy. So John 14 actually destroys the Trinity, but it also destroys modalism. Uh, 15 verse 27. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all these things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which he did put all things under him. 
verse 28, And when all things shall be su subdued unto him, then shall the Father also himself be subject unto him, and put all things under him, that God may be all in all. There is a hierarchy in the Godhead. Okay, I, I forgot to mention that, you know, earlier, but this wasn't going to be part of the video, but just wanted to point that out. So, John 14 destroys modalism, too. Just wanted to point that out. So, no, I'm not modalist. There is a hierarchy and separation in the Godhead. But Jesus Christ is actually fully God within himself. So, anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.